Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to go over AWS Cognito again and how to dec decode the user data that is returned by AWS Cognito after the respawn, after the user successfully registers or logs into your website. So if you recall in the previous video, I showed how to set up your local website to talk or use AWS Cognito so you don't have to handle user verification, authentication, registration to your website. So just a few things I'm going to do right now is do a running demo. I'm going to show you the changes I did to my HTML code, and that'll be that. So of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if you liked the video, like it, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for future content. Okay. So first, the running demo. So if you recall, I have this website here. I don't have the server running, so you'll see this error right now. But if you recall from my previous video, um, in the folder that you actually have your HTML files, CSS files, JavaScript files, you will basically just want to run this command, the Python dash M HTTP server, which basically runs your content on a local web server. So you do that as this output. So if I go to this web link in the browser, I'm already there, but let me just refresh. You'll see that the website is uh, loaded up again. So um, I'm using Chrome. If you actually right click on Chrome, click on inspect, you can actually see the developer tools. Uh, this feature is available on every other browser. Um, it may be called something different, but uh, you can see the same tabs and uh, see the same information. So just as an example, let me click on login. Um, so I'm already signed in. You remember that I was signed in. I guess I didn't successfully sign out, but if I just click on this, um, let me just kind of skip that one second. You'll see a whole bunch of information printed out on the console window over here. So if I just clear the console one second and just refresh the page, you'll see how it just populates. So all of this information here is basically the information that is responded to by AWS after I log in or register. So you can see this first line here is just a full URL, everything. The, the information is cut off. This second log statement here, or I should say third, because this is the first one. This third log statement is basically just a URL parameter. So this is everything that um, is after the domain name. This field here is basically the ID token field which is part of the response over here. You can see here's the ID token field. This just extracts the access token field from this URL parameters. And then right now you can see that everything up to this point is not readable. They're decoded right now, or encoded, I should say. And this log statement decodes the ID token so you can see it's more readable. This log statement decodes this. And then I have just a couple of log statements just uh, displaying individual fields within the ID token. So to show you exactly what I did in the HTML code, I'm going to be looking at the same HTML files that we worked on in my previous video. So a couple of things to note. I did add these, I should say, I think all of these, which is the header field, HTML tags, I should say, and then two scripts. One basically pulls JavaScript or say jQuery from Google. You don't have to pull it from Google. You can actually just use this line here, which is commented out, which loads it to your website directly. And then I'm referencing a new JavaScript file that I created that I'll go over briefly. And I have this copy and pasted to the other two HTML files that I have. And the last thing that I did um, that is of note is in this URL itself, if you recall in the previous video, I did change the response type field to token. This was by default set to code, and I changed it to token because I want AWS to respond with the ID token and access token for me to decode in my website. So if we go, so if you do those change, if you do that change in this URL, then the rest of the JavaScript code that I'm about to show you will work. So here's my new JavaScript file. And you can see this is what is referenced in this line over here. And this line is replicated on the other two HTML pages. So basically what this does is it 
I call this function here, which basically is JavaScript jQuery's way of knowing when to when it's able to actually start doing any JavaScript code. So it's basically waiting for the doc document object model to be ready. And the document object model is basically an API for your code to actually access the HTML tags to manipulate. So if you want to add HTML tags, um, it would have to be done after this is actually ready. And um, you don't actually have to invoke this yourself. As soon as the page is loaded and ready, this will automatically be invoked, kind of like a constructor for a class. So first thing I do is just print out a log statement saying that the you know JavaScript jQuery code is ready to execute by just saying DOM is loaded. I extract the URL contents from the URL itself, the URL uh, browser, I guess where you type in like the website name. Here I basically get the parameter list. So there's the domain name of the URL and then there's the return parameters. And this basically just gets to extract the URL parameters. So for example, if your website is http yoursite.com question mark ID equals blah, 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 then the parameters variable here would equal everything after the question mark. Over here, I have a pound sign because uh, locally on my web browser, the separation between the domain and the URL parameters is by pound. But when this is actually run on the internet, when your page is actually hosted on the internet, um, it will be a question mark that actually separates the two. So if you're running this in a production server or anything, or just online, just replace this pound with a question mark. So these two lines over here basically um, extracts the exact field from that huge parameter list. I print it out. This, these four lines of code decodes it, makes it readable, and I print it out. I convert those decoded fields into JSON objects, which makes it easier for me to just display a specific field within that whole return value. And then these two methods here, or I should say this single method that is invoked twice, basically just uh, extracts the field, specific field within that whole returned list. So what I'm going to do actually is uh, kind of do the same thing as I did before again, but I'm going to click on the sources tab and go to my JavaScript file and put a breakpoint. So you can see everything that is happening um, as soon as the breakpoint hit. So let me hit refresh page. So this is hit again because this is automatically invoked as I mentioned before. And this first variable here you can see is already set to the URL. So this whole thing that's up here is now assigned to page URL. This two string is not necessary. I just forgot to clean that up. But um, here I basically extract the parameter list from the whole page URL. So you can see here these variables are actually being displayed here and right as they're being assigned. So that's neat. And then I display both of those parameters. And if I go to the console window, you can see that those are the only three things that are displayed. First is that initial DOM is loaded, and then the URL and the parameters. I skipped over the get parameter. I'm going to step into it right now, but here you can see ID token is set to the uh, value of the ID token field. So on the second one, I'm just going to step in. The first parameter is the whole URL parameter list, and then the second parameter is the field that I want to extract. Uh, the data from. So just uh, going through the rest of this code, it's going to split up that URL parameter list using the ampersand because all of the different fields within the URL list, parameter list, is separated by an ampersand. It'll find the field that matches the one that I want to search for and extract the value of that. And then just basically return it to the calling method and then it gets assigned to the variable that it's uh, set to here. So then I just display these two values again, the decoded messages, or should I say these are still encoded. Here I decode it, makes it readable. I convert those decoded objects to JSON. You can see it's still the same as you can see up here, but by decoding it, I should say by setting it to a JSON object, I can simply say invoke the JSON variable dot and then the field name. So you can see here in the ID token, there's an at hash field and then there's the value. There's a subfield and a value. 
a odd field and a value. So you can just reference the field name and then this will print out the value of it. And then you can see that uh, as soon as I go over this completely, you'll see that the console prints out the email and the ID. So if you actually go back to um, your Amazon Cognito user pool and you click on users and pool and you click on the entry because right now there's only one person registered to my local site because it's not live. You can see that my, I, uh, my email is printed out over here and that was extracted from the you know, AWS response. And then um, you can see that this other ID field in the log, in the console log statement, I indicated it's an ID, but I'm actually invoking the sub field of the ID token. You can see that this, in your user pool, is that. So the email and the, and the sub field are basically, you know, associating to the same user pool or the same user that's registered. So you can use either one for your website to kind of verify, like in your code to associate uh, a user's action on your website to just whatever your website is intended to do. So like if you have an e-commerce website and they, you know, buy stuff on your website, you can associate um, the purchases on the website using this ID and email on your own databases. And that is pretty much it. So this is a simple tutorial, I think. Uh, if it was useful, um, please let me know in the comments. I should say, like the video and subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you have any other comments, please let me know and I'll respond to them as soon as I can. So thank you guys.